Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about a discovery of mini-moons around our planet. Actually we've already known about mini-moons, but now we've seen at least one of them crash into our planet. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So before I tell you a little bit more about what mini moons are, let me take you back approximately 106, I think, years from today. On February 9th of 1913, this is what you would see if you were to look into the night skies. Actually, they only lasted for like 3 minutes, and to some extent may have resembled what you would see today when Elon Musk launches his satellite, the so-called satellite train, but what they saw in 1913 is today referred to as the 1913 Great Meteor Procession. Now this is not a photograph, this is just a picture that was drawn by a, a painter in Toronto, but in a nutshell what this was was basically dozens or possibly even hundreds of fragments that moved across the skies in a relatively perfect formation, not that different from what you see here, this is from SpaceX obviously. They also generated a huge amount of noise while moving across the skies and at the same time were visible in many parts of North America, including even places like Bermuda. And so in that sense many parts of North America observed this event and documented it both the visuals and the actual auditory experience. And this uh, image from Texas State University shows where they actually traveled and what parts of the world could have seen them back in 1913. But what exactly were these and how does it relate to what we're talking about today? Well, as you can probably guess from the title, these were mini-moons. And we know that because of the way that they traveled and because of the orbits which were concentric or merely concentric with the surface of our planet and also because of the low velocity, today we are almost certain that these were so-called mini-moons. Or in some sense you can also call them temporary moons of our planet. So if we were to take a look at our planet Earth and to somehow visualize various objects in orbit around our planet, ignoring the satellites that were launched by us, we would find quite a lot of stuff that is sort of invisible to us. So here in Universe Sandbox I'm going to try to demonstrate to you the um, more or less simplified version of this, but if we were to enable orbits we would find ourselves surrounded by various tiny rocks that were captured by our planet's gravity and settled in these temporary orbits around Earth. Once in a while, because of the um, interaction with the Moon, which you can kind of see already is happening with one of these objects, their orbital parameters will change and some of them might come close to our planet. And in case of 1913 meteors, a lot of them ended up flying through the atmosphere and possibly entered the atmosphere and then fell to our planet somewhere past this area right here, um, east of Brazil. Now Australia has this really interesting network known as the Fireballs in the Sky. This is on the website called fireballsinthesky.com.au and essentially it's to report various um, observations or detections of fireballs or meteors or in some cases meteorites. And it just so happens that the network detected at least one fireball not so long ago with the designation right here that seems to correspond to what may have been or very likely have been an actual mini-moon that then collided with our planet. Now the observations suggest that it was a very very small piece, possibly only a few centimeters across, but um, its orbit and its speed of entrance and of course its angle of approach toward the atmosphere of our planet suggest that it was actually orbiting our planet for a little bit before colliding with it. And the previous such identification with very accurate results was actually only in 2006. There was another mini-moon known as 2006 RH120, whose orbit we were able to analyze quite thoroughly for many years, and we even know exactly where it is right now. So you can see here, in between 2006 and 2007, it was um, in a somewhat hectic orbit around Earth, then got disrupted by the Moon, and is now doing something like this around our planet. So these mini-moons are pretty much all over the place there, but they're obviously very difficult to find. And in most cases it's a little bit easier for us to find them when they actually do crash into our planet. Now because they're all very 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 small, none of them pose any danger to our planet, but they are exceptionally interesting to us for scientific reasons. Because all of these mini-moons orbit around our planet and are essentially in similar orbits to 
a satellite that we would launch for, for example, GPS satellite, a lot of these objects would be very interesting for us to go and try to, um, well, actually collect. It would be very interesting to launch a mission to one of these mini moons and try to recover as much material as possible or possibly just grab the whole thing if it's really small. Not only is this interesting from a scientific perspective of basically studying the early solar system, it also has a very practical reason. We could use these mini moons as a kind of a test bed for future mining platforms. So basically by creating a kind of a prototype for mining, um, let's just say autonomous robotic platform, we could then send it here and then use this platform to experiment with various methods of, let's just say, extracting materials. Now, this mini moon turns out to be a little bit larger than I wanted it to be. None of the mini moons are actually that big, but this is a good example from a visual perspective of what it might be like later on when we do actually try to mine asteroids, when we try to create mining facilities on asteroids somewhere out there. And some scientists even suggested that we could technically take um, an actual asteroid, especially if it's not too big, and then uh, change its orbital parameters to turn it into a mini moon of our planet. Now, here, the only reason would be commercial. If an asteroid has a lot of potential benefits to us, like, for example, metals and various um, rare Earths that we can't really find easily on the planet, then we could relocate the asteroid and turn it into an artificial moon of planet Earth. This is maybe what it will be like in coming decades as soon as we figure out how to mine these objects. Now, interestingly, over the years, these studies have also learned that um, our planet Earth has a tendency to capture most of these mini-moons, usually during its perihelion or aphelion. In more layman terms, the closest or the farthest distance from the Sun. This here would be January and this here would be June. So, in other words, most of these moons would probably be captured either in January or in June. And so this is a good opportunity for us to do the mini moon research. Now, many of these mini moons are only temporary. So um, at some point they will actually escape our planet's orbit or some of them might actually crash into it, but they're small, so it's not really a big deal. But it's also very likely that because our observational techniques have improved so much, we're going to be able to detect even more of them over time um, and even before they collide with our planet. And by the way, the only reason we know that this here was a mini moon is of course because of its low velocity. The velocity here was only about 11 kilometers per second, equivalent to a typical satellite of um, our planet when it crashes into it at the end of its life. However, a typical shooting star or a meteor you would see in the skies would have velocities at least three or maybe even seven times higher than what we've just observed. So in that sense, these are slightly different objects. They're also really important to study because some of them might come from objects that are much larger and they may have separated from a larger asteroid. And if that larger asteroid decides to come to our planet, that would maybe not be that good for us. So we do need to study these objects in a little bit more detail just to understand their origin and where they actually came from. But anyway, once we learn more, well, make sure to follow this up with another video. But until then, that's really it. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe consider supporting this channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot. I'll see you tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.